Hey, what's up guys? Kalen here with Modern Day Sniper. Um, got a couple little quick points here that I wanted to push out to you guys. I'm doing a couple of barrel swaps on rifles, getting ready for the competition season up here in the Pacific Northwest. And this rifle just happens to be a 6.5 Creedmoor. And the previous barrel that was on here was a proof research competition contour. And uh, it started to lose a lot of velocity, about 4,200 rounds. So it's time to pull that barrel. And I had several barrels from another uh, action that already had been cut for a specific tenon. And what I decided was I didn't want to let those barrels go. They had tons of life left in them. They'd only been shot, you know, maybe 200, 200 times or so. And um, so I had those barrels set back to fit American Rifle Company actions. And this happens to be one of those barrels. It's a uh, now a 24 inch proof research uh, M24 Contour 6.5 Creedmoor. And um, I just wanted to show you guys a look at uh, a bore scope and understand the effectiveness of this tool. This thing, you don't have to go out and spend, you know, 400 bucks on, a, on an old school bore scope. This guy is like a $50 Amazon special. It plugs into your computer via USB and it's really simple. You don't have to be super detailed with this guy for what we're trying to do. All we're trying to figure out is what's the condition of the bore? What does it look like throughout the duration of the rifle's life? as well as using it as an inspection uh, device for things like carbon rings and uh, excessive copper buildup or anything that would indicate uh, an accuracy or pressure problem with your barrel. I can't remember exactly which model this is that I got, but uh, you can find them on Amazon for like 50 bucks. All right, so we're gonna come into the chamber, going through the bore guide right now. we are entering the chamber. I haven't swabbed out the chamber yet. I know it's pretty nasty with a bunch of, you know, crap from brushes and whatnot. So the edge that you're seeing on the right-hand side of the screen, this is the end of the chamber. And this represents essentially the, um, where the case mouth is going to sit inside the chamber. And so this is the area right here. And you guys can see that vertical line cutting through the, the camera. That is essentially a, basically a 90 degree shelf. And that is a perfect place for carbon to build up. Um, and this is where carbon rings are going to start showing themselves. It's something that you guys want to be mindful of, especially with big bore uh, magnums, uh, long action and short action alike, because there's an awful lot of powder getting burned in that case and a ton of carbon getting shot out through the mouth. And what the problem with this stuff uh, leads to is uh, pressure signs. And those pressure signs are pretty much a result of the inner dimensions of the chamber um, no longer being where they were when you started your load development. The other thing that a carbon ring can do is if it's allowed to build up too much, it can constrict the mouth of your case and actually crimp the uh, case to the projectile. And in center fire rifles for accuracy, we don't do that anymore. Um, you can develop a load to have a crimped uh, case neck, but you're never gonna get it perfect, and so that's why we don't do it anymore. Um, when that happens, what's gonna, what, what's gonna occur is a massive build in pressure in your cartridge, and it's gonna be outside the, the normal pressure curve of the load that you developed with the specific powder charge that you have, and then you're gonna get things like sticky bolt lifts and accuracy problems, and you're gonna wonder, man, what is going on? I don't understand what's happening. There's nothing really that's changed. You can scrub your barrel, nothing is gonna fix it until you learn about what a carbon ring is and where to find it. So let's move in a little deeper into the chamber here. This is what we would call the free bore in this area. And then we're moving into the lead. And you guys can see right here in the center of the screen, you can see it's almost like a ramp up. And those two parallel lines in the middle there, that is a land. And you can see those striations in the, in the metal, those are machine marks. And now that I've got this chamber set back and recut, I'm actually gonna have to shoot that in and break that in like I would a normal barrel and get those surfaces all smoothed out and evened out. So if we move a little bit farther down, there is no fire cracking here whatsoever. This is really good material. And this barrel was pretty much at the beginning of its life when we recut it. So a little bit of carbon in here, not a big deal. A little bit of copper, I, I want that there. And we'll just move through 
we're pretty much in the middle of the bore right now. Everything's looking pretty groovy. And let's go to the crown. There's our crown. You can see it's a nice, evenly cut crown. Get re exposed. All right, guys. New barrel, new rifle. Gonna get a scope mounted on it, throw some factory ammo through there to get it all broken in and smoothed out. Monitor the velocity until it starts to settle in over the course of about 100 rounds. And on this one, that's about the time I'll start load development. So uh, we're gonna shoot for uh, 135 ATIPS through this. And this is gonna be the rifle that I use for uh, our first team match that's coming up this year in June with Philip. So right on guys, hope you dug it. If you did, make sure that you hit the like button and give our channel a follow. And if you haven't already been over to the Modern Day Rifleman Network, please get on over there. It is a, a small but growing community of discerning shooters just like yourself who don't really wanna deal with drama on social media. They want to just ask questions and then have those questions answered by people that really care about answering them. It is 100% free. We do have paid stuff in there, but the free portion, there's all kinds of conversations and topics getting tossed back and forth. So I'd encourage you guys to come check it out. Until then, you guys know the drill. Keep your faces on the gun.